Hello students! In this lesson, we will evaluate the revenue and profit of a firm under monopoly. In the previous video, I have explained the characteristics of this market structure. And if you have not watched that video yet, I will put the link in the description box below. As a recap, the following are the characteristics or features of a firm under monopoly. Again, monopoly is a market structure where there is only one firm and the firm is a price maker. Meaning, a monopolistic firm has a market power to influence the price of the goods it sells. But though monopolistic firm has far more power than a competitive firm, it is not an absolute power. It cannot sell all it wants at whatever price it chooses. And if it wants to sell more, it must lower the price. Another feature, firm under monopoly sells goods that have no close substitutes. For example, the Debers, the South African diamond company which controls about 80% of the world's production of diamond. Lastly, barriers to entry. The reason a monopoly exists is that other firms find it unprofitable or impossible to enter the market due to barriers to entry. This can be technical or legal barriers. Technical barriers such as natural monopoly arises because a single firm can supply a good or service to an entire market at a lower price than could two or more firms. Number two, ownership of unique resources may also be a lasting basis for maintaining a monopoly. As I have said a while ago, the Debers Company. Legal barriers or government granted monopoly through patents or copyright. With a patent, the basic technology for a product is assigned to one firm. For example, the COVID-19 vaccine manufacturer may apply for a patent to the government. If the government approves, the patent gives the company the exclusive right to manufacture and sell the vaccine for 20 years. Another is copyright. The copyright is a government guarantee that no one can print and sell the work without the author's permission. In effect, the copyright makes the novelist a monopolist in the sale of her novel. Then government also may award a firm an exclusive franchise to serve a market. For example, the Jollibee Foods Corporation, Transportation Industry, and many more. Now we will evaluate the revenue of a firm under monopoly. Suppose the firm is producing water in town and the price per gallon is dependent on the amount of water the firm produces. The firm is aware that the more gallons of water it will produce, the price of water will drop. So let us consider this hypothetical demand schedule of water by a monopolist. The table shows that as more water is being produced, say from 1 to 8 gallons, the price of water will decline also from 11 pesos to 3 pesos. If we are going to graph these two columns, we can derive a downward sloping demand curve of a monopolist. Multiplying the quantity of water on the first column and its price on the second column gives the revenue of the firm. For example, if you will multiply 2 gallons of water to its price of 9 pesos, it will give 18 pesos as total revenue. And so on. Note that total revenue first rises and then falls as the quantity of water increases. We can clearly see this pattern if we will plot the quantity of water against the total revenue. 
As shown in the diagram, the total revenue curve is some kind of a bell-shaped or a parabola. This shows that a firm cannot produce output infinitely because total revenue will eventually fall as it reaches the maximum level. The information we derived from the total revenue column can be used to calculate the average revenue. It is done by dividing TR by Q. Average revenue tells us how much revenue a firm will receive for each unit sold. For example, at 3 gallons of water, the firm's revenue is 24 pesos. Dividing 24 by 3 will give us the revenue per gallon of water which is 8 pesos. Ibig sabihin, each gallon of water will give 8 pesos as revenue of the firm. Note that in the table, AR column equals price column. This characteristic is true for all firms, even the firms under perfect competition. We can also calculate marginal revenue with this formula. MR is equal to change in TR divided by the change in Q. The delta or triangle shape is a symbol for change. For example, the change in TR from 0 to 10 is 10. Paano nakuha? Change means final value minus initial value. So, 10 minus 0 equals 10. How about the change in Q? The same process, the change in Q from 0 to 1 is 1, or 1 minus 0 is 1. Now, applying the formula, delta TR, which is equal to 10, divided by delta Q, which is equal to 1, or 10 over 1 is 10. So, MR at the first gallon of water is 10. How about the MR of the second gallon? The MR of the second gallon is 8. That means the second gallon contributes 8 pesos as revenue of the firm. Now, we will evaluate how a monopolist maximizes profit. A profit-maximizing monopolist or all other profit-maximizing firm will produce a level of output where marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. At that level of output, profit is maximized. Suppose we have the following hypothetical behavior of a monopolistic firm. Graphically, profit maximization happens at the point of intersection between MR curve and MC curve. At that point of intersection, the level of output is Q star. And the firm will charge a price of P star. Why Q star is the profit maximizing output? Why not Q1 or Q2 is the profit maximizing level of output? Note that any level of output to the right of Q star, say Q1, Marginal revenue is less than marginal costs, which means that producing additional output is not any more profitable. So, mas maliit si MR than MC. On the other hand, producing an output to the left of Q star, say Q2, will give a marginal revenue greater than marginal cost. That means... Adding more output to the right of Q2 is still profitable. 
up to the point where MR is equal to MC. In other words, the MR equals MC rule is a production decision of the firm. As shown in the diagram, MR is less than P because the firm faces a downward sloping demand curve. Since MR is equal to MC at the profit maximizing output and P is greater than MR for, the, for a firm, the monopolistic firm will set a price greater than marginal costs. After identifying the profit maximizing level of output of a monopolistic firm, we will now evaluate its profit. Can you locate where is the profit of the firm in this diagram? Remember that profit is equal to total revenue minus total costs. But it is quite difficult to use this formula if we are going to calculate profit graphically. So what we are going to do is to do some mathematical manipulation with the formula without losing its meaning. Again, the profit equation. So on here, we will denote profit as pi. So pi or profit is equal to total revenue minus total costs. This profit equation can be rewritten this way. In here, we divide and multiply the right-hand side equation with Q. Or it is now equal to this one if we will distribute Q. From that equation, we can derive another information. Note that total revenue over Q or TR over Q is AR. And DC over Q is average total costs, as I mentioned earlier in the table. So we can rewrite again the profit equation as this way. Profit is equal to the quantity of AR minus ATC times Q. But take note, from our analysis in the table a while ago, AR is equal to P also. So therefore, we can finally write the profit equation as this one. So profit is equal to the quantity of P minus ATC times Q. Using this formula, we can now solve for profit graphically. Profits can be found in the shaded area below the price line and above the ATC line with Q star as the level of output. Monopoly profits will be positive as long as price is greater than ATC. And profit can continue into the long run because entry is not possible. Now let's have an exercise about this. Example number one, consider this diagram. The profit is equal to the area between the price line and the ATC curve at the profit maximizing output. Suppose price star is equal to 15 pesos, ATC is 10 pesos, and the profit maximizing output is 1000 units. Calculate now the profit of the firm in this diagram. So using the formula, we have profit is equal to the quantity of P minus ATC times Q. So P here is equal to 15, ATC is 10, and the uh, and Q star or Q is 1000. So in this diagram, the profit is equal to 5000. Or the profit is positive. The firm is earning positive profit as long as price is greater than ATC.
Example number two. Okay, please refer to the diagram. What do you think is the firm's profit? Suppose the values for P and ATC is equal to 15 and the value of Q star is 750. Again, using the formula, In this diagram, price is equal to ATC. So 15 minus 15 is 0 times the quantity. So the first profit is 0. The firm is earning 0 profit because price is equal to ATC. I hope you guys follow what I am talking about. Again, if we will wrap up everything. First, the most profitable level of output for the monopolist is the one for which marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. At that output level, price will exceed marginal costs. The profitability of the monopolist will depend on the relationship between price and average total costs.